these mountains stand in the middle of the biggest desert on Earth, the Sahara. It stretches right across the width of Africa, three and a half million square miles of it. At night, it gets so cold that it can freeze. During the day, the sun strikes it so ferociously that the highest land temperatures ever recorded were measured here in the Sahara, 58 degrees centigrade, 137 degrees Fahrenheit. And in turn, those oven-like temperatures rob the land of all its moisture. All in all, there could hardly be a more hostile environment for life on Earth. But it wasn't always this way. And if you want evidence of that, here it is. A group of antelope, probably sable, creatures that can't live anywhere in the Sahara today because there's simply not enough vegetation for them. And these aren't the only wild animals that have been painted on these rocks. A giraffe. A kind of wild goat, probably a mouflon. And antelope. Obviously, at the time these pictures were painted, there was good grazing here. Indeed, there was sufficient vegetation to sustain not only wild animals, but whole herds of cattle. We don't know exactly who drew these pictures. The artists may have been the ancestors of the nomads who today follow their herds of long-horned, piebald cattle just south of the Sahara. But we do know what they looked like because they left their own portraits. They lived here, it seems, some 5,000 years ago. But eventually the rains began to fail, the pastures disappeared, and with it, the cattle and their keepers. But there are one or two living survivors from that time. This ancient cypress, to judge from the number of rings in the trunks of others like it, is probably between two and three thousand years old. In fact, it was probably already growing here at the time when the last of the paintings were being made. It still bears fertile seed, but there are no little seedlings growing around here to replace it. The land now is far, far too dry for them. Indeed, the cypress itself only survives because it sends its huge roots deep into the ground to tap underground water. The drying out of the Sahara seems to be connected with the great changes in climate that overtook the world at the end of the last ice age. As the glaciers retreated northwards across Europe, so the belt of rains that fell regularly along their southern edge left Africa and moved up into Europe, and the Sahara was robbed of its rains. Indeed, it seems to be that most, if not all, of the great deserts of the world were formed around that time, and most, if not all of them, are therefore comparatively recent environments.